Good evening. This is Council Chair Kathleen Drew of the Washington State Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council calling to order our uh, meeting on land use consistency for Badger Mountain um, as required by RCW 80.50.090 and WAC 463-26050 and 463-26060, subsequent to the informational public hearing, FSEC is holding a land use hearing. During this hearing, the public will be given an opportunity to provide testimony regarding the proposed project's consistency and compliance with land use plans and zoning ordinances. I will ask Ms. Owens to call the council roll and then hand over the meeting to Judge Bradley. Ms. Owens. Department of Commerce. Kate Kelly, present. Department of Ecology. Department of Fish and Wildlife. Mike Livingston, present. Department of Natural Resources. Lenny Young, present. Utilities and Transportation Commission. Stacy Brewster, present. Chair, there is a quorum for the council. Thank you. Judge Bradley. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Uh, as Chair Drew indicated, uh, this is the um, land use consistency hearing where the council members will hear testimony as will I about uh, land use consistency. Uh, the process will be that the applicant will be able to uh, present their information. I did receive a request that a participating landowner be allowed to testify as part of the uh, applicant's presentation uh, do any of the other parties object to allowing the landowner to testify at that time? Do any of the council members object? All right, hearing no objections, we will allow um, the landowner to testify at that time. Uh, then uh, the County will be given an opportunity to respond and uh, as Chair Drew indicated after that, we will hear from members of the public who may want to testify. Uh, and again, testimony will be limited to land use consistency. Uh, we had a meeting just prior to this hearing where folks could provide other comments and the opportunity to provide comments on other matters remains available through midnight tonight. Any other preliminary uh, matters before we proceed? I would just like to ask a quick question about the participating landowner, just to understand the context. Could we understand how financially available re reliant they are? Because it seems a little bit biased unless we understand maybe the specifics of what they have to gain from this. That is all, thanks. Um, so I think we need to hear the testimony. Um, I'm not sure that bias would on that basis would prevent that person from testifying, although it may go to the weight that is given to that person's testimony. Anything else before we proceed? Um, Mr. McMahon, would you like to present? I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Drew, were you going to say something? No, that's that's fine. Yes, this is a t this is a testimony only on land use consistency, not on other matters. Correct. Thank you. Could you please uh, explain what land use consistency means as the definition? So each county has uh, land use regulations where they regulate what type, what property in the county can be used for different types of activities, whether it be commercial, residential, 
agricultural, other categories. And so the issue before uh, the council and me this evening is whether the proposed use of the property is consistent with the existing land use regulations of Douglas County. Thank you. All right, I'll turn it over to Mr. McMahon. Thank you, Judge Bradley, Chair Drew, member, members of the Siding Council. Um, I have the ability to turn a mic on and off, but not a video camera. I'm okay with that. If you want to see my happy face, uh, that would be fine with me, but I think that's on your end, not mine. So <laughs> I'll just proceed and you can decide, you know, whether to do that. Um, just a, I don't know, kind of a couple of uh, preliminary matters and comments. First of all, um, we have Kirk Bromley, I believe he's a, well, he's a landowner, and I believe that he would like to say a few things after the conclusion of my presentation, just kind of as a as a landowner. Um, there's the camera. Hey, how about that? Um, and so he may or may not wish to wish to speak. I will, you know, I leave that to him. Um, secondly, uh, with me tonight is my colleague Ariel Stavitsky. Uh, I am an attorney with Stoll Reeves Law Firm. She is one of my colleagues and you will uh, get to know her through this process. She is working with us on this application. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, just to make sure you all have in fact received our legal memorandum on land use, I think it makes it considerably um, a, a considerably simpler task to move through this. If you have that in hand, I, I checked in with uh, um, Assistant Attorney General John Thompson a bit earlier to ensure that that was distributed. And if it is, that that's fine. You can you know read it to your heart's content after the Hearing's over. Um, so we do appreciate the testimony. I will speak on behalf of Avangrid and say we do uh, appreciate the testimony from all of the members of the public. Uh, it's the kind of information that informs a, this process, which is a complex and very, very important process for the citizens of the state of Washington. So that kind of background information and the ongoing information that's provided in the proceedings will, of course, be extremely important in, in, um, in the council's evaluation of the project. I would say that just as an introductory matter that we unfortunately in the Northwest and maybe all over the world seem to have this false choice between clean power and um, habitat protection and residential land uses and the like. I think that's very unfortunate. I do think that the fact that we're in front of FSEC um, gives me hope that <laughs> that we can resolve these issues in a thoughtful fashion without uh, you know without getting you know unduly tripped up on that what I believe to be a false choice. So that's my editorializing. Um, I'll just head straight into this and, and I do ant anticipate that my presentation will be fairly, fairly concise. We do have a pretty uncommon procedural setting here. Uh, the applicant began working on a county conditional use permit application in early 2018, I believe. At that time, uh, utility scale solar facilities were an allowable use under the local conditional use uh, zoning code. This applicant, Avangrid, um, engaged in a very interactive pre-application process on the application for <clears throat> a couple of years until uh, September 14th of 2020, when the county sent to the applicant a quote, notice of incomplete application. And enclosed with that application was, the, was a copy of an ordinance that was to be adopted the next day imposing a moratorium on solar development. So after being deep into the app into the application process, that's you know, we, it's sort of ground to a halt at that point with imposition of a moratorium. In July of 2021, the county ended the moratorium and they adopted interim control measures. Uh, and the interim controls did several very important things that are important to FSEC, I think, um, in proceeding first. The interim controls relinquished the county's authority to review utility scale solar permit applications and conferred that power to FSEC. I have never seen that before um, and it was an interesting development. Uh, it may or may not have kind of legal foundation for the county to do that, but it doesn't particularly matter because we're at FSEC anyway. Um, but it is a very, uh, it was a bit of a surprise and an unusual thing for a county to do. And as I say, you know, all things considered, I think that FSEC review of a project like this is not a bad thing. Secondly, um, it made the, the, the interim controls made utility scale solar an outright 
permitted use rather than a conditional use with a very large caveat. Um, and by the way, in, in so doing, it, it, I believe that they repealed their con conditional use permit process in their zoning code. And again, it doesn't particularly matter whether they did that or not. So the the unusual caveat to it be to this this facility being a permitted use in the code is the imposition of really hoops of overlaying seven mile buffers that together render the Badger Mountain site and potentially the whole county as an area where solar development is prohibited. Um, and at a later time in the process, we can you know show you some maps on kind of how these uh, these these hoops of over overlaying uh, uh, buffers render this facility and many other locations in the county incapable of development. So that's what the county handed off to EPSEC. Um, the buffers themselves or setbacks are from city or town limits. Oh, by the way, they are all seven mile buffers, um, all of them, regardless of the resource issues or the like. Uh, so seven miles from city or town limits, seven miles from urban growth area boundaries, seven miles from a couple of airports, seven miles from habitat areas, and these are important words, with sensitive, candidate, threatened, or endangered plants or wildlife. So um, it, what this really adds up to is what is tantamount to a prohibition of solar development on this site and others, which we believe to be a rather dull tool and uh, and and hope that we can uh, find uh, you know a path forward in the F site process to kind of get to the bottom of what the appropriate evaluative tool is to actually appropriately evaluate the actual impacts of the project versus you know kind of a categorical seven mile buffer area that that surrounds these resource areas. So the code remains in discussion. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't appear to us to be entirely settled. Uh, it is not clear that the accompanying mandatory comprehensive plan uh, 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 amendment adoptions have, have, have gone through or have been adopted, and we are unaware of whether the SEPA work, the State Environmental Policy Act work, supporting its adoption is yet complete. So we are, you know, kind of still in an area where this is sorting out really as we speak. So again, the procedural po posture here is a bit unusual. Uh, due to the apparent inability to be, quote, consistent with the setback buffers, we, and in consultation with your Attorney General, the Honorable John Thompson, we have uh, determined that it's a tough case to make that this project is consistent with local land use um, zoning and plans. So we do not, and as we, as I think you probably learned a month or so ago, we, we, we have conceded that this process is not eligible for expedited permitting. That is not an available tool. Um, and that in all likelihood, the issue of preemption uh, and, and how to evaluate the county's code within the context of the State Environmental Policy Act and within the context of overall habitat issues, we anticipate that that's going to be addressed ultimately in an adjudication. So um, while this does <clears throat> uh, uh, while this does mean that we're not in an expedited permitting process, it does not mean that the project shouldn't be evaluated expeditiously. <laughs> and uh, and we we anticipate <clears throat> that the council will, of course, and council staff will uh, take due regard for for evaluating the environmental impacts of the project. Uh, we heard a considerable amount of testimony earlier about habitat issues. Those are very, very important issues that Avangrid takes very, very seriously, and that we anticipate will, in fact, be very, uh, very thoroughly evaluated in the in the SEPA process. But I wouldn't even necessarily discount the potential that the project could be evaluated with an MDNS with specific and, and very critical focus on these habitat issues that have appropriately been raised previously. So we see no, we see frankly no particular need for the council in this circumstance to take a whole bunch of time to develop a land use consistency order. Um, that's not the kind of process we're in here. We are here at this point in time because of the requirement in RCW 8050090 and WAC. 463-26050 to conduct a land use hearing. And in this case, that appears to me to be showing that land use is inconsistent. So uh, we move on.
uh, is our hope. So we do request that the council press forward in all deliberate speed to consider this application. Uh, the project may or may not be eligible for a SEPA MDNS, but uh, we anticipate that the council and council staff will not prejudge the wildlife issues and questions raised and that we will in fact um, be evaluating all this information in a very thorough deliberative and detailed process which is the hallmark of f sex review in the state of Washington. So that is <clears throat> that is uh, the applicant's presentation on land use. <laughs> um, there frankly aren't a lot of facts to uncover and get to the bottom of here. I think this is mostly, mostly issues of law, so we're not putting up testimony other than uh, the ability of Kirk Bromley to have a few things to say should he wish to do so. So I would just ask if Kirk would like to do that and uh, I'll stand down at this point and take my self off the camera. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMahon. Uh, Mr. Bromley, did you want to speak at this time? Yes, ma'am, I would uh, I would like to do that if that's uh, allowable. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Kirk Bromley. Uh, I'm a property owner on Badger Mountain, uh, have been for many, many, many years. Um, it's a generational ownership uh, thing. Um, I entered into a lease with Avangrid in 2017 uh, in regard to this uh, solar project. Uh, I was aware that Douglas County adopted an ordinance in 2020 imposing a moratorium on solar farm development. And I was aware that Avangrid was pursuing this process with FSEC as an alternative to uh, a county permitting process. Uh, I'm not sure I remember exactly how I became aware in the fall of this year that Douglas County had adopted an ordinance in July of 2021 ending the moratorium and referring all solar and wind energy applications to FSEC. The uh, ordinance that was adopted in uh, July of 2021 also imposed some criteria, interim, they called it interim criteria that the county hoped the state would consider when reviewing the solar and wind applications. Uh, one of the criteria is a seven mile setback from a list of locations, uh, including uh, city boundaries and, and the Pangborn uh, Airport uh, in Wenatchee. The Pangborn Airport is located on the bench above what above East Wenatchee uh, and is many hundreds of feet in elevation below this proposed project site. Uh, I attended a Douglas County Planning Commission meeting this fall where the issues of the um, ordinance uh, the reference to the referral to the state uh, and this seven mile setback were being discussed. And I inquired uh, as to the planning commission and the planning director as to how that seven mile setback was arrived at. Uh, I was told at that meeting that uh, in the original hearing in the summer, which by the way, uh, the county did not give any of us landowners notice of that hearing and they were aware that we were all very interested because we had public uh, recordings of our leases with Avangrid. But anyway, um, what I was told was there was a vocal number of folks that appeared at this county uh, commissioner meeting or uh, public rather the uh, public commission meeting and were advocating a 10 mile setback. And I was told at that uh, planning commission meeting that the seven mile setback was basically a negotiated item. Uh, they There were admissions that there was no science with the seven miles, there was no precedence for the seven miles, and uh, it was just done as a accommodation to these vocal folks that appeared at that meeting. And, and the, at that meeting, the planning director talked about, well, maybe it wasn't making sense to have it seven miles. Maybe it should be three or four miles. Well, that that meeting got continued. And then the next time we appeared at a meeting, the planning director uh, and the planning commission basically ignored the seven mile setback 
issue and just uh, ad uh, adopted the uh, ordinance to be recommended to the county commissioners. Uh, in my view, there is absolutely no logical reason to prohibit solar development on this project based on being seven miles from within seven miles of the Pangborn Airport. You can't see it from the airport. It's like I said, uh, the elevation change is high and uh, you can't see it from anywhere. It's not going to adversely affect anybody or anything. It's in a location that is strictly dry land wheat. Uh, there are no residences. Uh, I did hear Kevin Simmons testify. I think he is the only residence that's anywhere within striking distance of, of this development but uh, its impacts are going to be absolutely minimalistic. Thank you. All right, thank you. Would the county like to respond? Do we have a representative from Douglas County present? All right, uh, any comments from the Assistant Attorney General? Uh, Judge Bradley, I, I don't have anything to add at this time. I, uh, um, I can provide written advice to the council uh, following this meeting, but uh, I don't have anything to add at this point. Thank you. All right, thank you. Perhaps if we could, um, Judge Bradley, perhaps council members might have questions for those who have test the, the applicant who has testified so far. Certainly, thank you. Uh, council members, any questions for the applicant? Not hearing any. Um, anyone else who would want to testify this evening strictly on the land use consistency? I see a hand up from Mickey Fleming. Yes, thank you. Um, I spoke before on the other matter. I'm with the Chelan Douglas Land Trust. I'm also an attorney. I've been practicing law since 1979 and licensed in the state of Ohio, state of Washington since 2008, Ohio since 1979, and spent most of my career on land use matters. Uh, I also have a degree in agriculture from Purdue University. So the, all, all of this uh, information is uh, near and dear to my heart. I just want to mention that really Mr. Uh, Councilor McMahon uh, said before, there's really not much to say about land, land use consistency here because they admit that their uh, proposal is not consistent with the Douglas County Code. And with respect to that, the Douglas County has spoken both through the interim controls that have been mentioned um, passed in July of this year and through its compre comprehensive plan, which was just adopted in September of 2021 after a process of many years that go into doing a new comprehensive plan. And I want to note that that comprehensive plan was developed during the entire time um, that Avigrid mentions that it uh, was working with county personnel or considering this application since 2018. So <clears throat> I have submitted written comments that talk about provisions in the Douglas County Code over, over uh, uh, in the, and in the comprehensive plan. I won't go into all that detail, but just to note that <clears throat> the comprehensive plan makes very clear of the Douglas County's intention to maintain the rural character um, the agricultural industry and economy in Douglas County, as well as its natural resources, open space, and cultural heritage. That's another point that uh, hasn't been mentioned earlier, that these lands are, the cultural lands 
of both the Yakima Nation and the Colville Confederated Tribes, the Moses Columbia Band, as well as the Wenatchee Band. And not only historically, but currently, members of all of those Native American groups do a great deal of traditional root gathering and so forth in these areas. It's a primarily important area. And that is dealt with as, a, as one of the goals, in addition to agriculture, in addition to natural resources, is the preservation of cultural spots in Douglas County. So um, while the applicant has clearly said that they're not trying to establish consistency, land use consistency here, because it isn't, um, I think that the guidance that the comprehensive plan gives us is clearly shows that the county wants to preserve uh, its assets and that not to have uses that is, it is inconsistent. The Pangborn industrial area is the only place in the county that allows for industrial uses. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to testify on land use consistency? Um, yes, Judge, I would like to uh, make a comment. I'm sorry, who's speaking? My name's Lauren Meehy. I'm just a resident that lives in Fancher Heights, which is just down below the proposed uh, permitting area for this project. Go ahead, please. I just wanted to echo the uh, previous lady's comments that I think it's clear when you look at the uh, zoning consistency for the permitting project compared to the traditional historical use of the area that is not consistent with current zoning or any kind of previous zoning for the area it would drastically change the character of the uh, of the land use and the, just the general area uh, uh, of this part of the state. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to testify on land use consistency? Uh, Pat, is it Doneen? It's Pat Doneen. Yes, I, I would just, yeah, thank you. I would just like to, as a landowner in Douglas County, I would like to just go on record as expressing concern about the arbitrary nature of the ordinances passed by Douglas County. Um, it, they seem to be very activist in nature and not based on any uh, precedence or science. Um, in fact, I think it's interesting to note, as I've pointed out to folks before, that you can fly into uh, Indianapolis International Airport and see 87,000 solar panels within a mile of the airport. So, the so it's clear that there is no science behind the, the view that you need to place solar panels seven miles away from an airport. Um, so anyway, that's that's my point. I just want to go on record and encourage the state to um, perhaps look more broadly at the question of, um, you know, what's the underlying precedence or science that might drive these decisions and not be influenced by the activism of local officials. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on the land use consistency? Not hearing any uh, further requests to speak. <clears throat> All right, uh, so um, Chair West, I believe the process now is to conclude the hearing and then um, the council will prepare a written decision. And then um, depending on that decision, the process may proceed to adjudication. Is that correct? I think that uh, we, we will now close the hearing. Um, we 
because they have not requested expedited processing, I don't believe that we need to issue a decision, but we will deliberate about that with advice from our, our council as well. Um, but this is in taking the, the um, testimony tonight and we will um, determine the steps forward, one of which will be a SEPA review and then um, as after we conduct the SEPA review, we will determine the next steps on adjudication. All right, thank you for clarifying that. Is that also uh, correct, uh, Ms. Bumpus? Did you have anything else to add? That's correct, Chair Drew, thank you. All right, I did see a question about the deadline for um, submitting comments in writing, and I believe for this, uh, at least this proceeding that is midnight tonight is that correct yes it is how um for this proceeding specifically at any time um the public is welcome to send us comments which we will keep on the record understood thank you i hope that answered the question in the chat all right well i want to thank everyone for your participation this evening and for your presentations um, we will conclude the hearing at this time, and I hope that uh, all of our uh, participants and observers stay uh, safe and healthy, and um, we'll let the council get on with their work. Thank you, and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Judge Bradley. Thank you.